Okay, this is a quick screencast about adverbs in J, in particularly the adverbs represented by the tilde sign, uh, which are reflexive, passive, and evoke. And the reason it's got a number of different things that it does is because that's the way adverbs are. Uh, in language, adverbs would uh, determine their meaning depending on the context, the words they're uh, adapting or they're modifying. For instance, fast asleep. Fast means something different than if you were driving fast, and it makes a difference if you were holding fast to something. Um, fast, what it means, depends on what it's modifying. Uh, the English language uses this to make a very rich language, and J uses this technique as well with its adverbs to get a very rich, flexible approach. So, what do ad adverbs do? They modify nouns, verbs, and other adverbs. Makes sense. How are adverbs different than conjunctions and verbs? Well, adverbs only take one argument, conjunctions take two. So that's the big difference between conjunctions and adverbs, and verbs can't take other parts of speech other than nouns. What affects adverbs? Well, the parts of speech they modify affect them, and then how many arguments the new entity they create is given. That's the big things that affect an adverb. So. Two goals for this is to explain the power of adverbs in the J programming language and also to take a look at a visual interface that uh, might make it a little easier to see what's going on. This is the normal text form of what you would see as an adverb. This is the adverb. This turns out to be the verb. And here is the visual aspect that I'm thinking of putting together that makes it a little clearer about what's going on. But we'll see that in the future. So to start off with, how do you know what adverbs are as compared to verbs or conjunctions and what you're looking at is an adverb well you've got the J software dictionary uh, at jsoftware.com parts of speech breaks everything out for you really useful thing to take a look at when you're first learning the language so what we can look at here with adverbs the A stands for the adverb U would be a verb M would be a noun A would be another adverb so in this version here you can see adverb affects U, M, or A. So it's the uh, item that's immediately to the adverb's left. Now in the case of having two inputs to the, uh, the entity that together these create, if you have two inputs, you have a different situation, so or two arguments, you have a different situation than one argument. So say for instance U and A work together to create a verb. This is a monadic verb, it's got one argument, or a dyadic verb, two arguments. And what number of arguments you've got does change how the adverb acts. Just to simple thing, simplify things a little bit, let's take a look at a flowchart about how we'd approach this. First thing to check out is to see what part of speech the adverb adapts, and then check to see if there's an X argument. If there is an X argument, then you've got the dyadic cases, and you can see these are the different options you have. If you have only the Y argument, you've got the monadic cases. Makes it a little bit easier to understand what's going on with the adverbs. Okay, so taking a look at this, we'll take a look in term. Reflexive is the case when you've got a single argument to this complex and you've got a, a verb here. So for instance, this is what this particular text version is. It's got a single argument. There's the single argument. There's the adverb. It takes that singular argument, splits it into two streams and applies it to this verb. So this verb becomes a dyadic verb. That's why it's blue even though the complex of the two things together only has one argument. So it's green. Green for monadic, blue for dyadic. So if we had two of these, you can see that now this same symbol, the same adverb, does something different. If it's got two arguments coming in, the X and the Y, it reverses them before it gets to the dyadic verb. So this overall blue oval is a dyadic uh, entity created from an adverb, reversing the two arguments and applying it to a verb. Now if you take an adverb and you've only got one input here, it still stays as a monadic entity. It's doing the same thing it did up here when it sends a verb. It's sending two arguments, but now instead of sending it to a verb, it's going to send it to the next adverb before it sends it to a verb. Now in the final case here, this is really kind of a almost a spooky thing. Um, when you put a label next to this particular adverb, what it returns is the value of this label. So say this T had been assigned a verb, this adverb on the label T, you're going to just return the verb T. 
If it was a conjunction, you're going to return the conjunction T. So essentially, whatever T is, this allows you just to automatically return what the operator will be. Very flexible, a little bit spooky, a little bit dangerous, but, uh, but there you have it. So right here is just an example of how uh, I'm sort of considering um, having a beginner's uh, playpen or a work, workbench to take a look at these things. Um, across the top is how Jay would normally look at this particular item. Very simple, very straightforward. When people get more used to Jay, this is the way you really want to be looking at it. It's the, the power and the subtlety of the language is shown here. But sometimes it's useful to be able to see what's going on. So in this case, there's the tilde, and this is the reflexive adverb. So what it means is there's splitting the one stream coming in into two streams, and it's applying them to this verb, which turns out to be sort up. This sort up verb uh, takes its, its right argument, its y argument, uh, and it orders that and then applies that ordering to its uh, left argument, its x argument, and the result ends up as an ordered pair. So you've got this argument, which is the y argument to the whole entity. This uh, reflexive adverb means this argument gets applied to both sides of this sort up and the result is the sorted pair. And down here we can see if you write this, which is the verb sort up, the adverb uh, reflexive, and this argument, it's equivalent to putting that same argument on either side of sort up. It orders this, makes it a key, applies it to that, and the end result is everything's in order there. So that's a short tour through what adverbs can do. If you uh, go to the address here, you'll be able to uh, respond with comments uh, either about the accuracy of what I'm talking about, the nature of how I'm doing it. Uh, I welcome feedback. Thanks a lot for, uh, for listening.